poco, hey, to another episode of Business, Funding, and Whiskey. We have Hello. today, today I have one of my best friends, uh, somebody that I know for a while, especially when I started my business um, in digital marketing, Mr. Dan Martin. Dan Martin is one of the senior coach for Antra Institute, and he's a long term, um, long time digital marketer. This guy has a lot of knowledge. I mean, he's the one that actually helped me throughout the whole process of how to even learn to start my own social media. Because I remember when I first started, and this happened in the pandemic, no joke. I only had a, a Facebook account. I didn't know nothing about TikTok. I didn't know nothing about Instagram. <laughs> but now we are everywhere. But guys, hey, Dan, welcome, welcome, welcome today. How you doing today, man? man? Oh, thank you for having me on. It's great to be here. Uh, and, and I love the whiskey part of this, too. It gives me a good excuse to enjoy it. A little uh, round ice cube beverages. Agree. Oh no, you're gonna like it even more as as, as the time goes. You'll see. <laughs> How you doing, Brock? How you doing today, man? Oh man, it's a it's a beautiful day to be alive, right? And it's uh, a great to excuse to drink some whiskey and um and have some fun. That's awesome. Hey Dan, I, we know that you're doing amazing things. Yeah, I, I know you're here today by the grace of God, but I know we, you are traveling all around the country, the world. Tell us about yourself. Tell us. Who is Dan Martin? What does Dan Martin does? And what is Mar Dan Martin wants to talk about tonight? Oh, nice, nice, nice. A little open-ended questioning. I, I love know, it. Right? <laughs> I know, I appreciate Both it. Teed me up nicely. Very good. Very we, good. Yeah, very, you know what? Take a sip before you do that. Take a sip before you do that. That one's on honesty tonight. Oh, I That's awesome. <laughs> Salud. What are you drinking, by the way? This is a little knob. Is it Knob Creek or Knob Hill? Knob Creek. Yeah, here we go. Knob Creek. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The bottle looks. How about you, cool Brock? What? Well, had to go with it. Nice. Knob Creek's nice. always a good choice. Uh, a little Doers 12 year. Little there we go. Doers as well. Let's go. <laughs> Salud. Go ahead, Dan. Tell us about you, please. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me on. This is really a fun show. And I've been watching your social media grow, by the way. And you really are freaking everywhere. You know, the ZZ Thank Top you, song Nationwide comes to mind, you know. And, awesome, uh, so, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice. Every time I turn something on, oh, there's Carlos again. It's, it's <laughs> sweet. Nice, nice job. I love it. I love it. Uh, you know, as you said, I'm, I'm a, the senior coach for Entre Institute. And uh, for five and a half years, I've actually maybe it's six. I don't even remember now. December 2017, that's when it was. I started that's working nice. with Jeff Lerner. And it was, um, you know, I showed up. I was a little scrappy, a little rough around the edges. I was having a, a rough time with my own business and it was an opportunity to uh, step into uh, a new light and of course if you've worked with Jeff like you have Brock you'll have to meet the guy he's amazing um, you know he kind of sheds that positivity everywhere he goes you know so it's been fun working with Jeff and building out that uh, entre coaching program and then and then passing the torch on to Rob who's doing such a good job with it now you see the whole program absolutely you know starting to blow up so it's been fun anyways um but That's i'll tell awesome. you what deep down inside i'll tell you what i really am i'm a drummer like i'm a musician a drummer. I'm a creative guy. Oh, I, like okay. I, I sculpt with clay i like i like i'm a creative guy you know i'm not like yeah. a salesman. i actually love some of your pictures that you've been posting in facebook some throwbacks that before <laughs> and after remember with your band that was amazing man that's that you look yeah. very i mean you actually look better now than what you did before Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I was on a little bit of a, you know, um, uh, I, I was looking fun everywhere I went. I just, it, if it tasted, I ate it, if it, if you know, drank it or whatever, if it was fun, I was looking for it, you know, and I, as a musician, that was a really easy place to kind of slide into. And, you know, you wake up um, one afternoon and um, you look around and you're like, this is not what I was built to do. This is not what I was supposed to be doing with my life at age 26, 27 years old. My friends are getting married. My friends are having kids. They're investing. They own homes. I own two drum sets and two PA systems, you know, <laughs> and a trailer. And that's all I own to my name, you know, and I've got yeah. this great book of photos, you know, and some awesome memories, right? Yeah, you know, but uh, I, I went home and and uh, got my first job in marketing. I, I worked with CBS Broadcasting um, as a sales rep, sold uh, radio commercials and TV commercials, and got kind of got into marketing there. You know, it was a new 
for fun. Like this was fun. You get to hang out with cool people. You get to go do like photo shoots and video stuff. And I was on the field of football, you know, games. And, and I was like, well, this is fun. This is a brand new kind of fun. So I really, really dug into that. And to be honest, now my new, my new fun is the metaverse. And I'm sure you guys are, you know, hearing a lot about metaverse stuff and, and thinking what, what is this metaverse thing and how is it going to look in five years? I mean, have you, have you gotten yeah. a lot of that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you, you are here tonight because we want to hear more about it. Oh, nice. nice. Okay. Well, so, you know, let, let's, you know, I, I said that I was blessed to be able to be on like a football field, taking pictures and stuff like that. And let's, let's use that as an example. Imagine um, when you buy a ticket um, to a baseball game that you can actually just watch it from your living room with virtual reality goggles on and you can go to the field. You can stand at the pitcher's plate right him and like watch him throw the ball. And when the ball goes whizzing by you, you can hear that snap of the glove. I mean, it's like you're right in that game, you know. So virtual reality is changing the way we're going to go to go to baseball games and go to sporting events it's going to change the way that we uh, that we uh, go to the doctor for instance yeah. you know um, there's going to be there already is actually virtual hospitals and virtual um, places where you put your virtual goggles on and there's a little thing you can buy uh, it goes on your tv and it scans your leg this is like you can go to best buy right now and buy this stuff you know um wow. and and the doctor can look at you and you know you can have that that consultation without necessarily have to leaving leave the house and you know tell you when you think about the implication of that and do you guys have anybody in your family who's maybe struggling or handicapped or it's really hard for them to go get out and go to the doctor and get have to take an uber or a cab or a bus or yeah you know, the implications yeah. are ridiculous now let's extend that out on a bigger you like 10x you know a bigger level yeah. worldwide Man, think of going to the, you know, the deepest jungle in the Amazon with a computer and having a doctor fix something there because you, you're right, there's this metaverse connection. So it's really, wow. really, at this, you know, and, and we hear these people talk about this stuff and we think, man, this is a long time from now, but it is two or three years from now. And it's already really? happening. To a degree now. So in other words, metaverse is like the multi-reality. So that's, yeah. that's what we're talking about? Yeah. So, you know, um, that's a good that's great i love this so when you think of the word metaverse you know what mm -hmm. is, what does that even mean right what is yeah. it like? um when you when you think of the word uh interspace or you know like some of the other words that we used to use in the they're out there in the stratosphere web you know or whatever that's that's what the metaverse <laughs> is yeah you ever played minecraft or do you have kids play minecraft yeah. <laughs> yes. okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or fortnite maybe fortnite right oh yeah yeah of course both of those are metaverses. That's what a metaverse uh, is. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. You go on the internet and it's a world that somebody's created and you can put your goggles on and go to this world. And now what they've done is they've capitalized it and they've turned it into a huge city. So you can go to the Nike store and buy a pair of Nikes and scan your foot for the perfect size shoe for both feet and have them custom colored and, and buy them in the metaverse and then they're shipped to your house no way for real <laughs> yeah. and they show up yes and they had recently duran duran did a concert in the metaverse right you put your goggles on and you walk down the road and you buy your ticket at the ticket booth and go i mean it's just like a and and then there's duran duran and it was pretty cool that was a live concert it's really uh interesting wow. and fun <clears throat> you know let's let's just look at to the i'm not sure brock do you have kids i know i know carlos has some children but you got one on the way but no not, got, not right, not oh, right next second. month next oh, month is gonna be a different I mean, different story myself so <laughs> I, I love yeah, yeah so I so let's it. put it this way uh, uh um dan i have i have four kids three of mine and i got brock too oh, absolutely buddy, oh, <laughs> <I love laughs> brock, i'm gonna send, you some, <laughs> I'm gonna send you some kitty version of vr goggles so you know oh no <laughs> yeah. man i love that thing like everything so no i see where you're going you, know, you were talking about being able to buy um you know tangible items in the metaverse but i've been seeing all this stuff about buying digital items right so can you like kind of explain to me what that is because i'm so lost i don't understand yeah. why somebody would buy a picture or buy like a 
uh, a pair of shoes that aren't real, but they have they have them now and it's it's theirs. My mind can't wrap around that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring my son into this. He'll laugh at this because you're gonna deal with this soon when you when your child is old enough to play video games. Oh, Carlos yeah. is already there with me. You know. Let's go, man. Let's he'll see. He'll it. laugh about this. Let's see what I, I gotta prepare myself to. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating this. I'm not trying to be braggadocious here by any means. I'm being honest. That's what I'm being. Right? Yeah. This, okay. And I've probably spent three thousand dollars on stupid clothing for my son's video game on Fortnite over the past oh, four man. years that he's been playing. <laughs> but maybe even more than that, right? And and they he's nickel stupid and clothing. Me. Yeah, it's like, hey, Dad, I need twenty dollars for this hat. I'm like, for a freaking hat? You're freaking kidding me. I, I'm mad. Like, I can't be mad at him, but you know. But inside, I'm like, oh. Yeah. You know, oh, and, right. and so he's, I said, well, what's so, what's the big deal about this hat? He's, you have to have this hat or these guys won't let you join their club. I'm like, oh, okay. Well. <laughs> you know, and they're like the cool clan and they're the ones that are winning all the games, yeah, yeah. And, you know, getting out. So, so now I have to buy this hat and the hat, he, and he wears it in the game for about two weeks. And then there's a new thing or a new, and, and they're buying all this stuff and they have a closet in this game. You can scroll through and look at all your outfits and all your different gear, right? And now they're talking about when you buy that stuff, it's going to be able to transmit to another game. So let's say that you have a character you purchased in Fortnite and you're going to go play Minecraft using that character's yeah. jacket or, you know, whatever the special thing is you wow. bought. So it's going to definitely transform the way gaming happens too, you know. Wow. Um, but yeah, as far as the digital pictures, you mentioned that uh, who would pay that kind of money for one of those NFTs, right? Yeah. Non-fungible token. Listen, my non NFT collection is launching next week. I'm really, really, really? excited. If I can, can I get a shameless plug my tattooed use? So, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll, so, I'll, so I'll let me ask you something. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I think there's a little delay. Sorry about that, my friends. I live way out in the country. Yeah. My internet that was awesome so hang in there um I, I launched my nft collection next week it's called tattooed use and uh there's sheep who have a story uh of a of a trip for farmer dan out to his pasture to witness a, a fireball landing in the middle of his pasture of his prize winning sheep and somehow through alien technology connecting them all to elon musk's brain giving them a human brain and suddenly they are on a mission to go out into the world and teach the world about uh, being an entrepreneur. And so it's just a fun little like a kid's cartoony story that, that we really you know, have, have got behind. We've created six characters. Each character has its own base. And when you buy the Tattooed Use NFT, it's a random drawing. You don't know which character you're going to get or what, uh, what it's going to look Some will have tattoos. Some will have lightsabers. Some will have different, I can't say all of the rarities because some are going to be worth a lot of money. And not money. I can't say that. Let me re let me retract that statement. They're not going to be worth a lot of money necessarily. This is not about the money. Disclaimer, backpedal disclaimer, right? Um, not about the money, folks. This is a collectible. I'm not giving financial advice. <clears throat> Anyways, but, but some of those rarities are going to be worth prizes. I can say that. And for instance, um, the roadmap has a trip to Dubai on New Year's Eve of 2024, 2023, 24. Uh, to go wow. skydiving in Dubai uh, for four nice. people who, if they buy the NFT and they get the one with the little red eye, or the, I'm not going to say what the trade is. It's not the red eye. I'm just using that as an example. They okay. win that trip. They get to go with me on that trip. So there's some really fun things. That's why you buy the the picture. I wanted to answer. I'm giving you the long version of Brock's answer. Sorry, my guys. But that's what no, no, I, that's that's. that's that's good, man. That's what we want to know. Now, let, let, let's bring this back to business. So obviously, business yeah. funding and whiskey. We, we're drinking whiskey. Now, let's, let, let's bring that back. NFTs. How can the metaverse, how an NFT can help a business? This was just somebody starting to start a business today. What does this mean to them? Because the future is the future. And we have to evolve with everything that comes around. Just like, you know, a lot of people, we went from AOL to what we, everything that we have right now, right? Remember that? That thing. And trying to get into the internet now we got terabytes of uh, actually the um um you know internet um so what is that what does that mean to a business um today what do do they really need it is this something that they should look into it and how they can benefit from it yeah i love that question thanks for giving me the opportunity to go right into that because here's the deal it's yeah. nft stands for non-fungible token that means it is not duplicatable 
It's a one of a kind. Mm. It's and and it's a token. So it's stored on the blockchain, which means it's almost unhackable, right? It's very difficult to hack the blockchain because of all of the different, wow. you know, connection points that validate that information. Uh, so it's the security is very very high, and and you can say this is my picture of that monkey, right? Now I'll give you an example of how that can be used. Um, let's say you own a hotel. The check-in process for a hotel is, by、um, by definition, notoriously bad. Right? I mean, check-in、yeah. sucks. Nobody、yeah. likes to stand around and wait. And no, no, we don't want the cucumber water and the cookie. I want to get to my room. You know. <laughs> and,、yeah. Thank you, but no. You know, let's go.、Uh, and and especially for business class people, an NFT technology integrated into an existing hotel chain would look something like this. You own an NFT that gives you 24 hours. Of Of a block of time in that hotel, it's a it's a pass that, and you walk up to the door. There's no check in because you have already checked in by purchasing that NFT, right? It's verified on the blockchain. It's secure, and there's a, a device attached to the door that you can show your special, instantly generated code that only that NFT has that will access the door. And you open the door, walk in, right?、Um, how about this? Let's buy a car. That title for that car, along with all of the maintenance records, all of the accident reports, all of the previous owners, are stored in a cube in the blockchain as an NFT. Wow! Secure, and the whole record is right there. Now let's go to housing. I love this, right? I, I told you that、yeah. they get first house as an NFT. Somebody took their house, turned it into an NFT, sold it on the blockchain, and the way I understand it, I haven't, I don't, I can't validate this for sure, but the way I understand it, no closing costs. No title company. It eliminated some of the rough edges in that sense of purchasing a home. So the future for real estate is, is huge as well. You know, you、mm. can buy a, a renter's token. You, you know, the、uh, rewards programs. You know, every time you fill your gas tank up, you get an NFT, and when you own ten NFTs, you can trade them in for the silver NFT. That's like the next tier, and that one gives you a discount on gas. Or you know, I mean, so the rewards programs.、Okay. Right. State of California、so、just allowed birth certificates, death certificates, social security cards、wow. are issued as NFTs now. Today,、yeah. right? wow. No way. So let me ask you something because this is something that we've been doing as a company. We actually got involved now in Airbnb. How can actually that model work for Airbnb? Is any can that work? Does Airbnb allows it? And again, you are the master at this. I'm picking your brain. Sorry, everybody. I'm actually asking for me now. So this is going to be question <laughs> after questions, and I hope you actually enjoy it. it too. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks for letting me just talk to you. I appreciate. It. I know I'm just like I, I get excited. It, you know, like this is cool. No, I, this is- I'm excited. You're talking. <laughs> hey, no, no, no. Keep, keep going, man. I'm having a good time. Uh, so, he's having a good time. Salute! <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I need a little refill here. I'm going to have my cheers again.、Guys. There we go, Barry. <laughs> awesome! What a great night. I need a cigar, except my wife is allergic to them, so I'm not、oh. going to be able to. You know, yeah. You speak my language. Let's you go. You know what? The, that that should be the next generation of this podcast. It's going to be business funding, whiskey, and a cigar. Yes. There, there you go. go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> a cigar. I'm I'm okay with that. All right. You know, I love that you you had mentioned the business funding because I know that that's that's what you're all about, right? And I'm I'm just、yeah. thinking out loud here, but you know, maybe if you don't mind, can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. I wonder how difficult it would be to get business funding for somebody to start some sort of we or NFT business that they would be interested in. Hmm. I mean that that th- that's always something new, man, and that's something that. We were even looking into being able to accept bitcoins and、um, a blockchain in order for for our services. But this,、uh, you know, it actually, I'm very interested in the whole the whole concept because as I, I don't I don't know anything about it. This is why you you here tonight.、Um, I wanted to see how can we bring this to others and how can we work together. But at the same time, how can we actually start something, even a bank, because that 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 is one of the dreams of Strata Vega Capital. To Star Bank, EBC Bank, just say we, we put it out there on the web right now. But yeah, that that could be one of those things, NFTs, something that we could bring into the metaverse. So we're very interested in that, and、okay. that's what we. I want to throw that question back at you. How is that possible? How can we make that work if we、yeah. can make it work? 
So I love it. Thank you. The key for me is to remember that an NFT is not a thing. An NFT is a ticket to a thing. Right? Mm. NFT has a utility. It has a purpose. And if it has a valuable thing attached to it, then it makes sense. My NFT, the Tattooed Use, gives you access to five courses that I've created about how to build an audience on the metaverse and how to build an audience for NFTs and some other things like that. Um, and, and the roadmap, when they get that, they also get access to a bunch of other stuff. And, the, you know, so there's a utility. There's a reason to spend 997 bucks on it, you know. Nice. So All right, what would so- be the utility that you could package with a ticket if you sold something that was a ticket? What, what would be that utility? Got it. Now, as a business and as, a, a, as you are a coach and students, I know you said a keyword there, audience. As a business, you always want to have an audience in order to be able to, to sell your products, right? To make money. At the end of the day, we're all in business because we want to be able to survive, create some um, 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 financial freedom, be able to have the life that we really want, right? How and why is it so important for a business to have an audience and how can they also acquire that from the metaverse? Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, And, you know, I want to I want to amend the question. If you don't mind me jumping in on that question, I think it's important not just for a business to have an audience. Honestly, I believe it's important for anybody who is looking for growth in their life, whether it's in their job, whether it's in, you know, the community, whether it's in a political position, whether it's in as a business owner, I I believe that being public means you control the narrative about what people think about you. And so an audience that listens to what you're telling them is, is much better than an audience that talks about you somewhere else. Right. So I, I believe an audience is important for everybody, obviously as a You know, the more years you can get, the better. So most people think. I personally feel that actually more isn't necessarily better. It's the quality of your list, of your audience, of your family. I prefer that rather than list. It's such a cold thing, you know. There's my list. It's the group of people that I really care about, you know. And I think whether you're in regular Web 2.0 or or Web 3.0 in the metaverse, we just, for me, one of my core values um, is that the metaverse is filled with wonderful people and we care about them. You know, that's one of our core values. It's not about, and and that's, boy, drives me nuts. I'll try not to preach too hard here, but, you know, when you talk about the $600,000 pictures of the monkeys and stuff like that, it turned our culture into all about the money. Wow. And it totally took the humanization of people out of that project. And everybody's, I'm Board Apes Yacht Club number. Oh, this number. That's who I am. That's my identity now. And it had that, you know, if we wanted to talk about some of the things that there's a lot of people out there trying to change in the metaverse, the, the things that we can fix and improve. You know, it's cool. If you would have gone to 1998 and said, uh, tell me about the internet. We would have said, well, it's this thing where you can go into a chat room and, you know, meet girls and guys, right? Talk about politics. And uh, that's really all it was, right? Because it wasn't even created yet. They don't know what it looks like. And that's the metaverse now. We don't even know what it's going to look like. And to me, that's one of the most exciting parts is that it's a blank slate. Like, what do you want it to look like? You can create your own world. And it can literally look like anything. It can do anything. You know, I, I, I don't want to use this, but it's kind of like you get to build your own little world. You get to be, you know, in charge of a of an area. It's cool. It's very cool. Now, you talk about people buying the land and in the metaverse. I, I know That's I've seen that, thing. right, where where they have it all mapped out. Somebody goes in and buys like a little chunk of it and they can create their own store or whatever. That fascinates me. Like, I, I, I still don't quite understand it, right, because I'm not that smart. But that kind of <laughs> yeah. stuff fascinates me. Well, I'm right there with you, my friend. I'm right there with you. <laughs> so let me ask you something, um, um, Dan. So as uh, and as you say, anyone, anyone needs an audience. I mean, you're in politics as a person, as, uh, as a business owner, so anyone. You also want to create a brand. How can the metaverse mm-hmm. help you to create a brand in Nandi? Yeah, absolutely. Um, important to have a brand in the metaverse right now. And really, as I mean, if I can just speak urgency in the moment. Yeah. Do it right now. Go get your brand started right, right, right now, Mm -hmm. because that's who wins. So look at the Internet in 1998, and the people who got in and started building their brand now are Mr. 
your beast with you know 100 bazillion trillion I people know. and little guy on youtube frankly you know evan this guy's Michael, amazing Harry, yeah yeah early adoption get in there now right yeah, yeah and build yeah. So, Dan, I got a question for you, right? So, you know, there's a lot of people out there that don't quite understand what a brand is. Can you can you help kind of describe that and what it should feel like, what it should look like? Hey, I love that question because, boy, I hear it all the time. You know, I've had about 5,000 plus students now in my career as a coach. Yeah. Um, and uh, that, a lot of that was with Entre Institute. Some of it was even before that. But, um, you know, when you ask most people, what's a brand? They go, well, it's my logo, right? My colors, yeah. My yeah, I've got a brand. It's a car, right? It's a picture of a car. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's not what your brand is. I mean, it, that represents your brand, right? Yeah. Brand colors and a good company would be what we'd call a brand standards card, right? Where we'd have a list of your three favorite fonts that only when representing out in public, these are the only three fonts allowed to go along with our brand. And your, uh, your colors yeah. that are exact down to the colored number. You know, so like I want the blue, so it's B00964. It's that exact shade, you know, and then the yeah, yellow. Is awesome. And uh, and then it's got, the, you know, the black and white logo and the color logo, and it's got the transparent logo. And, the, you know, I mean, it's got, and then that's your brand standards. But that's really just what represents what people think about your customer experience. Mm. What's the experience that they have with you as a business? What is their overall impression of you and how you work, you know, and how much of a leader are you? How much can they trust you? How much do they think you're, you're working towards excellence or even better towards legacy, right? Yes. Those are all things that people think of and it's subconscious and they say in three seconds, they've formed an opinion after, after meeting you formally, you know? So yeah, that's to me, that's that a brand is your customer experience. And then have a cool logo. Uh, and have, have a cool logo. logo. <laughs> that's a good color. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, that that that's a that's a depend on the on the market or the type of uh, market that you actually target when you created a brand, or this is something that should be specifically for everyone that you meet. That's great. Company. Yeah, yeah. I um I had a student who um, she she showed up with her logo and she said, "Okay, here's the deal, Dan." I have this oak tree in my grandma's yard. It's beautiful. It's huge. It's 110 years old. And my grandma and her and my grandpa, when they were dating, carved their name into this tree when they were like 14 years old. And it was actually planted by my great. I mean, like she had this huge thing. Like that logo was so emotional. She wanted that tree and she wanted sunset because there were butterflies. And yeah, I mean, it was like this whole story. And that logo represented every ounce of anything she cared about in her life like that was she's put so much yeah. thought into it and I, I was I was touched by that because it was very you know somebody that actually cared enough to spend that kind of time um, putting that together and thinking about it. I thought that was really interesting unfortunately I had to remind her you know Julie sorry I shouldn't use her name um, you know this is a fishing lure it's a fishing lure if it's not working with the pink color, you have to use the green color, you know? And if it's yeah. not a worm that's making the fish bite, then go to a minnow. It has nothing to do with an emotion, you know? So I think if we remember that our brand, our job, if, if we're truly forward thinking about our audiences, if we're really caring for people, then everything I do should be about them, not about me. That brand is not about me. They'll about me. What does my audience need to see? to trust me, to know what I'm all about, to be interested in opening up a door and talking to me and allowing me to help them solve their problems. It's all about them. I don't care if I like the logo or not. I want I want some somebody to design a logo that everybody's going to like. Not my decision, right? I love that analogy. It's a, it's a fishing lure. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely right. So, um, I mean, phenomenal, right? So what, in your opinion... So I want to grow my business. I want to expand my business. I want to keep year after year. I want to, I want to, I want to overachieve what I'm doing. So what would you say is the fastest way to grow your business? Oh yeah. Easy question. Thanks for, for giving me the softball. Yeah, that's, awesome. that's, no, I love that, that's a layup right there. You drinking, <laughs> we're drinking a layup for you, baby. <laughs> yeah. 
Love it. Love it. Yeah, you're making this easy. So thank you. No, listen, this one little business doesn't do well. Every single business doesn't do enough. Well, okay, so that's maybe a broad brush that I'm painting with. Maybe there's a few on the fringes. Most businesses do not create enough content to drive organic, meaningful, relationship-minded traffic. They don't create enough what, what does that mean, content? Yeah, so they don't make enough. If you own a business, you should be doing three TikTok videos a day. And okay. in, this is my opinion. I don't mean that you should. Yeah, I don't mean to be, oh, uh, you know. But, but in my opinion, if I were a new business, I would be doing, in fact, I am doing three TikTok yeah. videos a day, every day. And I put them into a program called, well, I'll just tell you, repurpose.io. And yeah. I connect all of my social media to repurpose.io. And when I make one TikTok video, it automatically pulls it out of TikTok, removes the watermark, conditions yeah. the music so it won't copyright issues, and plugs it out to Facebook, Facebook group, uh, YouTube, YouTube shorts, Facebook reels, Instagram reels, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and a, a few other places. And then it stores that in my Google Drive so that I can use it in a couple of months just as a repeat with maybe some different music in the background. So it's really, Ooh, really wow. a and and That's if a amazing. business isn't leveraging that syndication strategy of just you know firing out content, you have to get nets in the water, you know? We're catching fish here, right? Yeah, that's true. I love it. So, I mean, social media is the new norm, right? So, I mean, every, I feel like every business should be out there if they're not already out there. I know that, Carlos, you were absolutely killing it, as we talked about earlier. You, you're, you're everywhere, right? So, I, I completely agree with what you're saying there. You know what? He um, is killing it, too. Uh, the guy's you know what, everywhere. You know what? You know what? You know what? I'm killing it because I have, a, I have a great team. I have a great team. It's not only me. They make it easy for me to be able to be all this. So, thank you, Brock, and everybody else. Ah. <laughs> you know, the editing is good. I mean, really, you've leveled up your editing. I see graphics. I see, you know, the, the yeah. captions are in place. You're, you're hitting all the marks on that stuff, Carlos. You know, Thank now you. Um, we, we go on. The, the goal is to help people. The goal is to put uh, um, um, good enough content that people see the value of how we're trying to help our community and be able to help businesses. Because the goal here is to be able to help businesses to understand that they can get lending. A lot of people go out of business. That's one of the things that we teach. Yep. One out of three businesses will go out of business in the first year because of the lack of capital. Right. And then you can you can build it. And we could help you in record time with the system that we have created in less than 90 days. So, again, I just went into my pitch there real quick. Yeah, no, throw it in there. <laughs> Carlos, and just because a business needs capital or needs funding doesn't mean that it's a failing business. A lot of big businesses right. out mm -hmm. there, big or small, really, they go through these ebbs and flows, right? So it's... There's there's down times, there's stagnant times, and then there's peak times. And if you don't prepare for the stagnant times, right. then your business will ultimately there. It's going to need an influx of cash flow. And the best way to go about that is make the right decisions when you're looking for business funding or you're looking for lending. Right. And what I mean by best decisions, it's not just the most amount of money that I can get, but what is the most favorable terms What's the best ethical decision for my business, right? So, I mean, that's a lot of things that I, I feel like the majority of companies out there, they, not companies, I, I mean, small business owners, they yeah. just, they're like, hey, give me funds, give me funds, give me funds. And they don't think about 12 to 18 months in the future when they're having to repay those funds in astronomical APRs because they were guided by the wrong company. And that's just my little... Quip there. Um, I, I'm gonna shut up now. But. No, 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 no. And, and, and it's completely true. So I'm, I'm gonna take you. I'm gonna steal your thunder here, um, Dan, real quick. So I, I want to give an example of what what we mean by this too, um, and how we can help a business to not only obtain that capital, um, because a lot of times you need it. It's not a, a failing business, like Brock stated. Um, so for example, when I probably a couple of years ago, I used to own a couple gas stations. Back then, before the fuse um, um, cigarette came out, we were a tobacco um, store. So a gas station usually makes money on the convenience store and not on the gas. So the gas, you know, the goal is to bring as, as low the, the, the gas as low as possible so you're able to bring the person in. Once they're in, they always try to get something. Now, fortunately, and unfortunately for me back then, the, the, the store that we had was a tobacco main. So about 75% of all our sales was tobacco. Back then, when 
the fuse started to come out, then the sales on tobacco started to, 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 go, to go away. Now, I didn't know nothing about business credit. If I would have business credit, then I would have some reserves. And that's what we teach people. Learn how to get business credit and have it and not need it, then need it and not have it. Right. So no matter what, when you actually sell tobacco, you sell it at a, at a loss. So you sell it at 90% of what you buy, and then the company gives you a kickback at the end of the month with a 10% of revenue. So you make money, but you need to be able to know how to manage your money. You need to be able to know how to actually gain the, 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 this capital in order for you to be able to invest it back into the business. Well, guess what? Once you know tobacco was not selling, we were still selling at a loss, and it and, and didn't help the, my, my ex-partner. This is what Brock talks about. What's going on with you and partners? No, that partner that I had, he started investing money from the company. So we actually had to sell the pro, the, the, the company by you know or the gas stations uh, at, a, at a fire sale. And we had to sell the other one in order to cover all of our expenses. Oof. But Oof. If, yeah, I know. Oof. <laughs> so, but if I would have known more about business credit back then, then I would have had the, the, the grounds for me to be able to even buy the personnel, just kick them out and be able to invest back into the company because I knew how the business worked. So that's what we teach. Like I said, it's good to have it and not need it and need it and not have it. So with that said, how can the metaverse help me grow my business? That's important what you just said. And I never, I've yeah. never understood the idea. I feel like it's a scarcity thought when you say debt is bad. Because I don't believe that. I don't believe that for a minute. And yeah. and I love it. You're in Dave Ramsey's program and you're doing it and you're yelling, I'm debt free. Good for you. Good for you. Because bad debt is bad. You don't want me to start talking about this. Uh, yeah, good debt. That, <laughs> yeah. that makes you money. Why, if you have money that you can put a dollar in a machine and get a dollar twenty back, how much money are you going to put into that machine? You know, are you going to sit on all your money or are you going to cram it into the machine as fast as you can? You know. So, anyways, Correct. thanks for saying. Yeah, how will the metaverse help your business? So, <clears throat> you know, we, we talked about being an early adopter, right? And and the power of getting in first and, you know, the people who bought the good plots of land in the different metaverses that I, that exist, you know, they own pieces of digital property that are, you know, in Times Square and are going to make millions and millions of dollars for them someday. You know, there is um, there's a lot of that just downright real estate opportunities. But for your business to be in the metaverse, Really, right now, today, we have this thing that people talk about called Web 2.5, right? And so, I Web heard about that. I heard about that. Please, 2. what's 2.5? 2.5. Yeah. So, uh, so, so there's a there's a struggle because people think NFTs are, you know, you hear these stories of people getting scammed and these stories of rug pulls and these stories of, you know, even Seth Green had his board ape yacht club stolen after he had a deal with hollywood to make a show about that as a character he turned his nft into an actual character and created and, and it was stolen from yeah i mean so there's there's some wow. some misconceptions about the metaverse as a whole and um and so one, one of them is just that it's not it's not good but the nice thing is that early adoption is now starting. People are starting to see, no, it is. And now if you own a shoe company, you have to have a store in the metaverse or you're like the, the old guy belly up in the tar pit back there with the, you know, with the uh, uh, pagers, you know, right. That's their impression of you, you know? And um, so being in the metaverse obviously positions you as tech forward leader, forward thinking can trust you you're going to be around for a long time because you're preparing for the future everybody knows it's coming there's no doubt about blockchain and metaverse um and and then i think the other thing that you can do in the metaverse is there's a lot of advertising opportunities there's a lot of networking opportunities um so just to be able to start learning a little bit about it it's like when facebook first came out and everybody's like i don't understand the facebook you know <laughs> the facebook <laughs> but yeah it was the facebook right and uh so that's where we're at with the metaverse right now it's going to be an exciting time and i'd love to ask you would you ever have a a loan a business loan store in the metaverse where people can walk in in their video characters and and say hey carlos i'm john and i want a loan well, since you want to steal my thunder, that was that's going to be my next question. I see you as an architect right here. How can we make that work? Let's just paint that picture. Let's just hypothetically, not hypothetically. 
<laughs> that's awesome. You know, um, the biggest thing right now, in my opinion, that's going to be really up and coming are you're starting to see a lot of um, metaverse events that are actually starting to be done right. And for the first few metaverse events, you know, the technology is so new, it's not even really built yet. We're kind of building the plane as it's flying through the air, you know, and um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's a kind of challenging place to be with the metaverse. It's going to be 10 years, maybe five, five to 10 years before we really see some of the edges um, smooth out. But that doesn't mean that it's not going to be the place to be. Um, so I, I just feel like events in the metaverse when they were first out you would kind of see bodies kind of floating off the ground and they'd be kind of bumping into each other and you know i would be i would be kicking one leg up in the air you know no one knew why because they were still trying to you know figure it out now it's a much smoother experience it's actually very very realistic um they came out with some really high-end goggles that's the other thing the virtual reality goggles. you know if you wore those eight hours a day would be uncomfortable like wearing a wearing a mask from covid for eight hours a day you know you the back of your ears will start to look for right or whatever <laughs> oh you and, too and, <laughs> yeah yeah right a yeah, big note you know, it gets in the way um but but you know the goggles get hot and and you start to perspire after a few hours under it and so they're coming out with like self-cooling they've got a five thousand dollar goggle that's just beautiful now it's super light it's like wearing a sleep mask almost and it has cameras built in and sensors and a little fan cooler gel cooling stuff i mean it's it's wow. cool <clears throat> so as that technology gets a little better the whole thing will be better but again as as a loan specialist as a business credit specialist how would you enter the metaverse i would say an event you need to do an event like an event for business owners right and um there's all places that you can rent in the metaverse you can go rent a, a stage or a, a banquet center you know they've been the, yeah they have them in the metaverse just like in life and throw an event to encourage people who are in that space to come in and, and get some funding from you carlos and how can we own the ABC Arena in the Metaverse? The ABC Arena. So you just so have to. Uh, ABC. We want to own an arena. Okay, so um, I'll 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 share. I'll let the the cat out of the bag. Yeah. I probably shouldn't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I don't care. I'm just gonna <laughs> live on the edge. So. On our, so I partner with another, I built an agency, a name, image, and likeness agency that we represent sports figures. We represent, right now we have some college football players and we're creating a digital collector's card, their rookie card. Most of them are going to be drafted. They're, they're great kids. And so we're creating those digital collectible cards. Right? And um, so we're actually going to be building a stadium in the metaverse. And that's going to be our, our company is called Metasports Digital. It's going to be the Metasports Digital Arena. And um, it's going to be dedicated to our dear friend, uh, Brandon, who was our business owner and, and passed away last, well, a co-owner with our company and passed away last uh, January from a really aggressive form of brain cancer, 26 years old. So uh, there's Brandon for you. Thanks. Thanks for letting me mention and appreciate that. Um, awesome. Um, awesome. Yeah. So if you want to build a stadium, build it right next door to ours. It'll be yeah, like, uh, you know, Home Depot and Lowe's, you know? So, yeah. So, as, as a business, so let's just say you say that you could own real estate within the metaverse. Is that something that I also is like in the real life that um, grows in value, grows up in value? How do you purchase it? How do you acquire it? How do you do that? Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to own yeah. a home in, in the metaverse. Is that obviously I see my son playing and I, he plays, you know, uh, um, you know, like you say, um, um, what was it? Um, Fortnite, Minecraft. Fortnite. Here we go. Fortnite. Fortnite. I always forget about that. So Fortnite. He always playing Fortnite, and I see all the little things that he does, whatever he buys. That you know, he plays with friends, and they're able to play. You know, from he got friends from home and friends that are in their house, and they play um, virtually. So, mm. how can we actually, if if someone is looking to acquire something as a business, is that possible? And does oh, it go yes. up in value? Okay. Very much so, yeah. So um, picture this. I mean, obviously, it's very similar to regular real estate where inside of the video game, like let's say in, inside of Fortnite, you could buy mm -hmm. like, the top of the mountain where the, where the cool house was, and you could buy that. And the owner of Fortnite said, hey, I'll sell that, that spot to you, and you can build a fence. You can do whatever you want. It's yours. You can cut the top of the mountain off and light it on fire and paint it green if you want. It doesn't matter. It's yours. You know, and there aren't a lot of rules in the metaverse. So 
buy the plot of land and then you hire a development team that specializes in building things and you tell them what you want. I want a roller coaster and I want a hot air balloon that lands here and I want a helicopter port and I want, you know, 10, uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, maybe you can, you, you build what you want to build there. And uh, wow. it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. That's amazing. And then once That's it's there, how do you, how does that yeah, I mean, if you get so if you build something there that people want to come visit, and that's the idea in the metaverse, you want to build something not for you, you don't want to sit around with these goggles on by yourself. The point of the metaverse to begin with was that you know, this is supposed to be a place that's going to be a much more friendly version of social media. The metaverse came to be because they said, Hey, listen, and I'm going to use Republicans and Democrats, but you can insert whatever that's just for the example here. Yeah. Republicans, you can go build your room over here, and all the Republicans are going to go over here. Democrats, you build your room over here, and you guys go out over here, and then there's never any fight, right? And that was the whole purpose that the metaverse started on the, the principle. Founded on. So you're going to see a lot of that type of thing, different locations as well. Hmm. That, that's an interesting concept. Um, Dan. Yeah. <clears throat> now, Dan, um, you've been a coach for many years and then your shift on what you've done in life from Mark, from being a musician, an artist. I mean, you're still being an artist uh, today with everything that you actually form. I mean, on, only you and someone like you can actually um, create what you're creating. And that's why I love because a lot of us need people like you. Need you, the people that are able to design, people that are able to think outside the box, because I may, may have a thought on what I want to do, but I don't know how to put it together. Let's put it that way. I know my strength. I know my weaknesses. And that, that's a hell of a strength that you have. Just like Brock. Brock is, is, a, is a hell of an artist, too, by the way. So, Oh, nice. One nice. I, yeah. One thing that I wanted to ask you is um, you a coach. You teach. If someone, and, then, and again, now we're going to go back to business, not only the metaverse. If someone is looking to to hire, to look for a coach, a mentor, how can they do that? What's the best path to take? What is the best way to be able to decide which is the best coach for them? Yeah, you know, that, that was a really, really important question that when Entre Institute had a big growth spurt, excuse me for a minute, <coughs> good whiskey. <laughs> um, when Entre had a growth spurt, and it was time to bring on more coaches, we had to ask ourselves, what is, what do our coaches need to look like to provide that excellent experience that we, that we insist on, that Jeff Lerner won't put up with anything less of, you know, for the most part, he is a, just a, you know, you look at that Entre logo and it's the, the big letter E, and I feel like that stands for excellence, right? Anyway, sorry, I don't mean to be an yeah. Entre, you know, no, but, no, no, but no, as a coach, we looked at that. What what do we need to provide to people to be top notch, you know? Yeah. And um, I always had this vision of I was I was in pest control back in the good old days in my earlier years until I started growing a third eye from the chemicals, you know. <clears throat> we had to remove, thank God. But uh, yeah. <laughs> but we would go to these conferences every single year. There was some, um, you know, we had to do ongoing training with the state of Minnesota, so we'd go to these conferences. And the guys from, um, oh, I forget the uh, the company name, but anyways, the one company, uh, they yeah. were like, so everybody knew they were the best pest control guys. Their training program was like almost a year instead of six weeks. And they, they had all the really uh, scientific jobs and they had the best equipment, the coolest outfits. I mean, everybody wanted to work for that company. And when they would walk into the room, there was, you know, 300 or 400 pest control guys sitting in this big uh, banquet room at a hotel and they would walk in last and they would walk in single file. Right. And it was almost a big production as they came in and everybody was like, Oh, there's, there's those guys. Yeah. It's badasses, you know? And so for us, it was all about building that team where when we walk into the room, people know that they don't, that we're not messing around, you know? And so how do, how do we define a good coach from a not good coach? Are the first qualification for for me in my opinion is they have to have some proof you can't just teach you have to do first you do and learn and yeah. then you teach yeah. after you have results right you know i'm i was so blessed i had a failed newspaper and and failed is a little harsh word i closed it i chose to close it up because it was yeah. failing right yeah. it hadn't yeah. failed yet but i could see the writing on the wall you know <laughs> and so we, we turned that into a digital agency and it, it was such a tragedy and i was hurt it was my baby i built that damn thing excuse my french 
And and when we turned into a digital agency at the time, I thought it was a thing for me. But now coming in as a coach, it was my proof. I had to have that proof to start coaching. Wow. And so yeah, we look for that in, in a coach for sure. And I think that's what you should look for too if you're looking for a coach. I also think that, you know, you have to reserve yourself to hiring somebody who is going to piss you off on a regular basis, hopefully. Yeah. You know, and is going to yeah. actually hold you accountable not tell you the nice stuff all the time. This is something I'm working on, by the way, as you know, Carlos, right? I, I'm Minnesota nice, you know, and I sometimes I have to say, hey, what what are you doing? You didn't you didn't complete the task, Carlos. How come? Yeah. You know, did you did you screw up the calendar again? Right? And I have to be able to say that and people are upset yeah. at that. But when you're looking for that coach, I think it's important to choose somebody that's gonna push you. It's okay, I'll take it. Yeah. You know, as, as your coach, I'll push right back too, you know, in a good way. Yeah. You know, that's true, that's true. Um, and I, I also think that you need somebody who has, um, and this, this has been a hard lesson for me because as I first started coaching and, and for the first few, you were really featuring and focusing on just getting them done. Once you get the curriculum mm-hmm. done, my hands are washed, right? Um, now I see that there's a better way. And, and we've been implementing that for a couple of years now as we've grown this program. But the right way to do it is to make sure you're caring for that person, not just as business, but also, you know, you know, professional, right? But there's also the physical aspect and the and the mental, the, the personal relationship aspect uh, that uh, when you approach that as a holistic um, uh, program, it, I think it's more effective. Got it. Yeah. Very yeah. creative, man. This is amazing. Yeah, sure. I, mean, <laughs> I, 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 I love talking to you. I mean, um, you've been a great mentor, a great coach throughout the years, and we appreciate you. We, we, we decided to implement certain things that you told us about. Um, but thank you. I know you're very creative. How has creativity influenced your life to today? Your family, man, how does it influence? I know you love to fish too, right? Mm-hmm. You know it. I wish I had some oh, pictures you go, for you. Yeah, you go ice, oh, fishing, ice fishing too, right? Yeah. Let's go, <laughs> Dan. Yeah, you guys come up to Minnesota. I think I just said, yeah, that's a very Norwegian thing to say, you know, up here in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you get me talking about fishing, I immediately go right to that. Uh, but yeah, yeah you guys come up to the Minnesota and Canada border, and we'll go nice. out. They have a storage nice. unit with my name on it, and they'll drag yeah. that thing 10 miles out into the middle of the lake, and we'll drive our vehicle out into the lake 10 miles. It's the Lake of yeah. the Woods, seventh lake. Lake, right wow and we'll pull walleyes this big out of the ice all day long it's not even fishing it's just reeling in Ooh, it's amazing really let's go yeah, dan man. let's go it is. <laughs> no so dan i'm a big fisherman as well um i do a lot of fishing off of kayaks and listen you come down to florida let's hook into some some redfish let's go <laughs> oh yeah. oh yeah you'd all be there next month yeah i'm serious i'll i'm i'm taking you up on that one Okay, okay. okay. I'll take you out, man. Let's have a good time. No, but yeah, so getting back to, to the question, has your creativity has influenced your life today? Where you at today? You do you think creativity brought you here or something else in life that brought you here? You know, I'm I'm um I hope you don't mind that I share this, but I'm a I'm a Christian, okay? And as a Christian, I believe that we were all given various gifts. Some people have the gift of, you know, healing somebody with their kindness and with care, you know, and t- and, and they have that spirit of taking care of people. You know, yeah. some people are, are leaders, right? That's you, Carlos. I, I saw that a hundred times at the events that we've attended together. Yeah. Um, some people in, in sheepdogs, right? Protectors, you know, yeah. they're naturally that way. Um, I think that has a piece of creativity in themselves that, that um, you know, whether it was in the fourth grade or whether it was in the first grade or your mom said, you know, didn't didn't hang the picture on the fridge or, you know, somebody said you're singing off key or, you know, that that statue looks stupid or whatever it is. Right. Somebody has has stopped our creativity along the line and gave us the thought that I don't do that well and that I don't have that talent. And um, it's tragic to me. So, yeah, creativity is, is what saves the world, by the way. In my opinion, this is how we fix everything. I think that our problems can be fixed mostly with the entrepreneurial um, ideas and core values of an entrepreneur. The, the value that I understand that work is important and, I'm, and I reap my rewards, right? 
And the idea that I'm, I know that uh, I can learn skills and fix problems with those skills. And without those new skills, I, I'm not going to fix things. I'm not going to have the life I, I need, right? I mean, the world is, frankly, I don't mean to get all philosophical, but the world is setting us up here, guys. Don't you think? I mean, we're being taught to be sheep. The education yeah. system's broke, right? That is the true. college system is broke. The high schools are having problems. I mean, there's, there's some stuff in the world that's not teaching us to be creative to be entrepreneurial, to live that wild side and take chances and be happy. Sorry, I get passionate about this. No, no, but no. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is, this I is mean what everybody got to hear. Yeah. And we love it. We love it. This is what everybody has to hear. Right. There's a reason Creativity. that business finances aren't taught, right? So personal finances, business finances, you can't even learn how to how to write a check in school let alone how to manage your finances, how to make sure that you've secured finances for the future. So, I mean, I, we're all we're all for this. Yeah. So. I just set my daughter up with an infinite banking program, right? So Ooh. we have this life insurance policy that we put money into, right? And that grows interest. We take loans against that. She gets the money right back. It's a, a wonderful, wonderful thing. And they don't teach things like that in school. They don't teach things like that. that let's, let's, talk, let's, talk that. <laughs> let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Is that an IUL? Oh, geez, I need to know this, don't I? Um, <clears throat> I'm not no, sure. No, no, but let's I'm talk not... about infinite banking. Let's talk about infinite banking. Let's go, Barry. Oh, yes, yes. For sure, for sure. So obviously, you know, I, I like to keep it simple. I, I get lost yeah. in the technical stuff, and accounting is my least favorite thing to do. But I will <laughs> tell you, my insurance agent sat down with me for two hours after I sat down with Jeff Lerner, who told me about this concept oh, to begin wow. with. That when I heard about it, I was like, what the heck? Nobody is even tell. Why are we not te teaching this? This is amazing. Everybody should have an income. You know, and imagine being able to take money that you make, or not all the money that you make. I should I have to be careful yeah. here because that's not accurate. But to be able to take a large chunk of money every month and put it into an account that grows interest, and then be able to take a loan against that account for 90% of the balance and never pay it back until you cash that out after it's grown all that interest. It's an amazing thing. And the thing is, you don't have to pay it back. You know that, right? You don't have to pay it back. You don't have to. You, you borrowing against a death benefit. And guess what? The insurance that they're going to pay out, even no matter what. I mean, they, they won't pay out the whole debt benefit. So why not use my debt benefit while I'm alive, right? Yep. And Absolutely. My money. Well, and you know, when you die, if you have a million dollars worth of you know value in that account, and you you've taken eight hundred and thousand dollars of it out as loans. You don't get all that money that you took out. What's left over as the insurance benefit? You're spending it now, but it's still gaining and in interest. By comparison, the interest rates that they're getting on these things are not bad at all, especially in this economy. I think it's fantastic. I'm, I'm kicking my. Be, you know what? The other thing I'm going to do is move to Puerto Rico. So I can live there nine, oh, 192 yeah. days <laughs> out of the year and not pay. Anyways, that's another topic. I hope that there's no hurricanes coming through. Uh, yeah, yes. and you pay only two. What is it? Two point four percent in taxes. Yeah, you you don't pay any um state taxes, or maybe it's any federal. I don't remember which federal, is, federal, but yeah, no it, federal. federal. But you yeah. need to be at least I mean, uh, one hundred and eighty-one days out of the year in 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 in, in state. Or so you yeah, know, in Puerto bit. Rico, doesn't okay. have to be recurrent. You could just go back in and out. You could be there every other yep. month. So let's move to Puerto Rico. Absolutely. I, uh, I visit Del Mar as often as possible. It's this really cool community on the southeast corner of Puerto Rico where a bunch of internet marketers have bought the land and fenced off the area. It's a gated community. They have their own police force and their own schools. They have an wow. equestrian wow. center for their horses and uh, sailboats on the ocean and beaches and tons and tons of rentals. And it's absolutely paradise. What, what is it? Tierras? What? what was the name of it? It's I'm looking it up right Palmo now. Del Mar. Palmos Del Mar. Palmos Del Mar. Okay, got it, yeah. got it, got it. All right. And it's it's beautiful. It's about an hour and a half from San Juan. Mm -hmm. It's right on the coho. It's just it's one of the and they brought in high powered internet and yeah, it's it's pretty neat, pretty special place. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey guys, I have to go. I hate to leave you. No, 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 I, no, no. no, no, no. This has been amazing. So 
This has been amazing. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, we appreciate everything that you're actually taking the time to. I know you are, you, you got to travel too. But Dan, let me ask you something. If, any, if somebody wants to, to work with you, like we're trying to get, you know, we're trying to sit down with you in the next couple of days to see how we start this whole metaverse and NFTs for Stratavega Capital. But if someone wants to actually work with you, not only as a coach, um, work with your agency to start um, working in the, within the metaverse, but also the NFT, how can they do that? Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for giving me a plug. I appreciate it. Um, you can look at me on my Facebook page. Facebook, uh, it's Results by Dan Martin. Right, Real easy one to remember. Uh, you can send me a messenger via that. You can also email me at dan at entrenation.com. Uh, and uh, let's see. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and... No, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. Um, I, I do want to say one thing. Anybody who sends me an email tonight... Before midnight tonight, if you send me an email and just the, the only thing it has to say is the word NFT, right? That's what I'm NFT. I'm going to enter you in a contest to win one of three of my personal NFTs that uh, that are selling for nine hundred and ninety-seven dollars a piece right now. So I'm going to give three I'm, of I'm those away to any of your listeners right now, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? What we're going to do? Dan, uh, see, this is alive. live. Once we finish our live, I'm going to put that information in the bottom of, of this video, too. So just in case you didn't grab it, Great. you go ahead and there and go ahead and email them as well. All right. Dan, hey, hey thank Amazing. you so much for joining us. Um, appreciate all the quality content that you provided. Thank you so much. Dan, thank, thank you, thank Brock. You. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. We'll hey, see you in pleasure. Florida for fishing. Okay. Let's go. Carlos, I just wanted to say I was going to have it here for this and show you, but I just I just have the axe in my other room, oh. and I want to say thank you again for that. You'll have to you got right? it, man. I appreciate it, bro. Hey, man, thank you for everything. Hey, guys, I appreciate you guys being here with us tonight. Um, thank you for being here one more time. And like like every week, we actually bring content and value to all of you. We got Mr. Dan Martin. He's the metaverse expert and one of the best coaches that I've ever met. So, guys, thank you for everything. Have a good night.